that will burn, sear into your, into your brain, and you will remember for the rest of your life. That's my hope, right? That you will, that, that, that this very simple example will help you to, to think about organization, organization, not necessarily organizations or an organization, but organization for the rest of your life. That is my hope. So the first thing I want you to notice is we're not talking about a clock. We're not talking about a mechanistic thing with gears. We're talking about something, Steffi, let Sorry. it go. <laughs> Steph, let it go. I will give you this putty when we're done. You know, take it home and play with it and everything. <laughs> You're so much like me. You're like, <laughs> okay. So very distracting. Putty is very distracting. This is slime. You can buy it anywhere. And you can make it. Very you, slime. Can you can make it. Yeah. Um, so it's an organic thing. Your organization is an organic thing. It is not a mechanistic thing. It is organic. It is made up of people. It is made up of irrationality and rationality. It's, it's, or it's wet, not dry and mechanical. It is wet. It is wetware. If you want to think of it as wetware, it's, it is a, it's, it's more like an amoeba than it is like a clock. Okay? That's the very first thing I want you to remember. And so, I, you know, the slime is kind of a metaphor for an amoeba. Right? Now, if we think about this amoeba, let's say it's an amoeba, but it could be anything. It could be a, a, a mammal or whatever. If we think about this amoeba, what are its functions, okay? One of the functions that it has is that it has some purpose in the world. Now, Darwin's evolutionary purpose for this amoeba is to survive and multiply. That's its purpose. So we can, we, we can, sort, of, we can sort of take this little thing and we can, we can sort of anthropomorphize this thing and sort of create a little thought purpose, which is survive and, and multiply. Yeah. Right? And that's its purpose. Its purpose in the world is, is to do that. That's what everything it's designed to do is to do that. Right? And that purpose in a human organization, we can give it a name like vision. But really, it's, it's a function. It doesn't matter what we call it. It just is functionally critical that this thing has a purpose. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's functionally essential to this thing that it has a purpose. And in, in this particular case, it... It has this purpose. Now, in order to accomplish that purpose, it does things. It acts, right? It acts in various ways. So it might have some little, some little wing-type thingies that allow it to move, right? It allows it to move. It allows it to change directions. It allows it to search for things, etc. Right? Little flagellums or whatever, and they can kind of, they can kind of move around. And that is how it acts. That is how it behaves, right? That's its action. And you can see its action. And that action, if you look at all organisms, they have kind of repeated sets of actions that they do in various schema. Does that make sense? So there's your mission. That, its mission is what it does, right? So if you think in a very simple sense, the mi word mission is very, uh, very easy to connect that to the word missionary. What does a missionary do in the world? They go out and they convert the unconverted, and they do it over and over again. And the purpose is to bring more of those conversions in the world to bring a bigger tribe. Hopefully, the whole world will become part of that tribe. That's the vision. But the mission is go out and convert the unconverted. I do that action over and over and over again, right? Does that make sense? Now, what are you going to need to act? Capacity. Yeah, that makes sense, right? You need capacity. Capacity is like capacity and ability. Ability is like action, Capa capability. You need capacity, which is like action potential. Think of it, so mission is the action that you do repeatedly. And that's a function of an organization. And capacity is the potential for action. Now you don't just want the potential for any action, you want the potential for the action that is critical to this organism. Right? So it's not like I just want as much capacity to do anything. I want capacity to do that one or two or three things that I got to do over and over again to reach my, my vision. Does that make sense? So capacity, you can think of like little batteries. Right? 
And those little batteries come in lots of different systems throughout the organizations. Each one of these little batteries is a system. And each one of those little batteries that are part of the system, and you can even have bigger, you know, they could have be different size batteries, whatever, oh, right? Uh, each one of those things not only has potential in it, but that potential can be converted, right? That potential can be converted into action, right? Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Right? So that potential can all be converted into action. Right? And what we want to do in an organization is build the right kind of capacity, mission-centric capacity, to do the mission to arrive at the vision. Does that make sense? And though that capacity exists in the systems and subsystems that are in the organism. So these are all subsystems, and together they make up a system of systems that allow this thing to have capacity to do the actions it needs to do to reach the goal that it needs to reach. And it doesn't matter what kind of organ, it doesn't, the thing about consulting and the thing about being in organizations that I guarantee you is things will get infinitely complex. And when things get infinitely complex, you will get divorced from reality. You will have a hard time keeping up with it because it's so infinitely complex. And if you can remember the simple functions, you can be one of the few people who can stand back and say, yes, this is very complex, because all organizations are very complex. But underneath, there are simple functions that have to be in place for this thing to be effective. And if I focus on those functions, I will be able to navigate that complexity better. Does that make sense? And the final thing, which we haven't talked about yet, is learning. And what learning is, is another little set of appendages that go out in the world, and it, they collect information. And all these things really are collecting information, right? Even these little flagellums are collecting information. But they're collecting information, right, with the world, and they're saying like, you know, so let's say, let's say that there's some, I don't know, let's say there's some, some toxin over here, right? <laughs> There's some toxin, and this little guy's like, oh, stay away from that. And then the thing's like, the thing's like, oh, move that way. You know, got to go that way, right? Because this little guy is like, danger, right? Does that make sense? And so it, it moves away. And these can be market forces. These could be other competition. This could be what your customer's saying. This could be all kinds of feedback, any kind of feedback from the environment that's coming into the system. And that feedback could change the capacity that you need. It could change the actions that you do, all that kind of stuff. Does that make sense? And that's really it. No matter what organization, no matter what level of scale, it has these functions. And these functions are what we're trying to, in many ways, design more capably as humans to do it purposefully rather than to just let it happen naturally. Because no matter what, if you just sit back, your, your organization will have VMCL functions, period. Just like this amoeba will have VMCL functions. Does that make sense? What we're trying to do as humans is have them more purposefully in a more designed way so that we can kind of get better at picking where this thing ends up and how fast it ends up there. Does that make sense? But either way, there's going to be a VMCL function in your organization. You just have to figure out what it is and what you want it to be. And culture change is the difference between those things, the change between what it is and what you want it to be. Does that make sense? Does that help? Mm -hmm. You think you'll remember that forever? <laughs> yeah. Do you